Well, I am the death of art. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Death of Art. We're in New York City on the Bowery. It is 15 degrees out, freezing. Nevertheless, we came out to see Joe Coleman's grand opening of his latest masterwork. Apparently it took five years to do this thing, so let's see if it was worth it. All right, guys, things are looking up. Right away, we found the bar. It seems like they're serving both water and wine. I'll choose the wine. All right, so this is not Joe Cole. It's miniature, it's tiny, it's detailed, but it's this guy called Ray Matterson. He did a lot of time in jail, and I guess he ran out of stuff to do, so he started making these miniatures. And I mean a lot of miniatures. There's like maybe 40 of them here, and he did many more which he gave away. Interesting stuff, and it really uh, stays with Joe Coleman's theme that's inside a lot of his paintings, which we're about to see. All right, so we're trying to figure out which one of these paintings is the Sorcerer's Mirror. Uh, that's the one that he spent the last five years doing. Uh, all of these things look like he could have spent the last five years doing them, to be honest. So I don't know that it really matters. But for the sake of completeness, we're going to figure this out. So bear with us. In addition to the new one, there are a few works which really focus on self-portraiture. And it's always the same thing. It's Joe and what's going on inside Joe's head, which is actually quite fantastic. There's a lot of little details. Of all days to paint yourself when you're wearing this shirt. Do you have a magnifying glass? I don't. Do you oh my gosh, thank you. thank you. Thank you, thank you. This shit's amazing. I'm really fascinated by the stuff inside. This, this stuff's amazing. But that embroidery shit is unbelievable. So this is Joe's tribute to Adam Parfrey, the guy who started Amok Press. And uh, he's holding a copy of Apocalypse Culture, which had a cover by Joe Coleman. And he's even like recreated his original cover, which was as intricate as any of his other work. And he's done it in miniature on the, the painting. We've got Jack Parsons up here. And we got Hitler having an out of body experience. We got Boyd Rice down here. We got someone here, which I think might be Robert Anton Wilson. I'm not quite sure how Andy Warhol was linked to it. I don't know if, if they put out a book about that. I don't know if everything that's in the painting is something that they put a, a book of. Crispin Glover? Oh, it is Crispin Glover, of course. And that is Robert Anton Wilson there. Now a lot of what I don't like about Joe's work is that it is very, very cluttered. Big, sweeping, powerful uh, compositions just don't seem to be there. On the other hand, I see he owes a lot of his style to underground comics of the 60s and 70s, which were every bit as cluttered as that. The clutteredness, I guess, is something you have to get used to. And when you get closer and closer and closer, the more amazing this gets. But you really have to get that close to really understand and get the full effect of these paintings. As this happened, the leaders started to mold into one beautifully hideous two-headed beast. Unlike a lot of paintings that are huge, here he's competing with Chinese guys who paint on grains of rice going small, so everyone has to crowd in with magnifying glasses to see it. 
Kind of like a regular gallery where you're in, you're not obliged or encouraged to be that close to the paintings because you might damage them. You have to get in close to these. I mean, the actual art is smaller than some books that art appears in. So you'd have to enlarge it just to put it in a coffee table book, which is very unique. Racist president, go hide in your bunker. Protest sign. Okay, guys, we found it. It's called 100 Seconds to Midnight. No, it's called... It's called A Sorcerer's Mirror to one... What, what's yeah, well, it's the Sorcerer's Mirror at 100 seconds to midnight. And the Doomsday Clock was at 100 seconds to midnight when I completed that piece that took me five years to make. But now, since it, its completion and the week of the show, the clock has speeded up to 90 seconds to midnight. And I'm going to leave it at that for now. I saw a kid at a museum do this, and it's just amazing how close you can get. And, you know, some like 12 year old was doing it. There's a lot of single bristle brush work. Also, he has this thing where he lights people as if they're like old school uh, movie. So you have this, this top light defining the top of the hand and a little like reflection underneath giving you this bit. It does that a lot. You know, same here. She's lit from the front by, let's say, uh, you know, a big movie light. And then you have this reflection. It's kind of a, like a key to scoot up. It's like a movie. I can see why a sorcerer's mirror took five years. It's got so many layers of detail. It's just not just the detail in the subject matter itself, but some of the best parts are really in the imaginative little figures that he does in the frame, even the sides of the work, which most people won't even see. You'll never see in a photograph, in a book. They're delicately and thoughtfully done, and that really indicates a master, a real complete work of art. We haven't seen things like this since the triptychs of the Renaissance, and I think he's bringing a lot of that back. So, bravo, Joe. Joe is a real big deal in this town, and this gallery is getting mobbed, so I'm going to escape before I get crushed to death. Have a good night, guys. Please like. Please subscribe and please ring the bell.